During the next few minutes, you'll be introduced to the safe operating practices that must be followed when operating abrasive cutting tools and grinders with cutoff discs. Operating a portable grinder with a cutoff disc or zip disc is extremely dangerous. For this reason, all operators must be thoroughly instructed in the potential hazards and safe use of the grinder as a cutting tool. Make certain you read and follow the manufacturer's instructions for installation and use of the special guards to be used with cutoff discs. And read and follow the operating manual before using a zip or cutoff disc. Manuals can be obtained from your supervisor or at the tool crib. Most zip disc incidents occur because the operator skips basic safety practices by not recognizing hazards, becoming complacent, and taking shortcuts. One mistake with a zip or cut off disc and you'll have shortcuts all right. Short fingers, short arms, and perhaps a much shorter life. Cut off and zip disc injuries can be extremely serious and even fatal. If you see someone unsafely operating a grinder as a cutting tool, stop the work process, then take the time to coach them in the correct behavior. Because they are so dangerous, some companies may require a permit to be issued before allowing use of a zip or cutoff disc. Check with your supervisor to identify site or company requirements. We repeat. Any cutting task performed with a grinder is an extremely dangerous work activity. Prior to seeking approval for use of a portable grinder as a cutting tool, a job hazard assessment, JHA, may be required. The job hazard assessment will aid in identifying other alternative methods and tools for accomplishing the job task. If there is another tool or method to effectively accomplish the same job task, use it. However, if no other tool or method is practical, a zip or cutoff disc may be the last resort for accomplishing the work task. Make certain you complete a field level hazard assessment, or FLHA, and obtain a permit if required prior to starting your task. Portable grinders used as a cutting tool should be no greater than five inches in diameter with fully appropriate guards as designed and specified by the manufacturer. Here's the minimum personal protective equipment required for cutting with a grinder and also for using a cutoff saw with a cutoff disc. Hard hat, work boots, good quality leather gloves, and hearing protection. A face shield must be worn along with face and eye protection to include safety glasses with side shields. Mono goggles may be required if there's a possibility of particles deflecting inside the face shield, such as cutting inside a pipe or other congested areas. Hazardous conditions requiring mono goggles would be addressed in the field level hazard assessment, company policy, or a specific job site rule. Respiratory protection should always be considered depending on what you are cutting. Respiratory protection may consist of an air purifying respirator or even supplied air. Make sure you check the material safety data sheets to become aware of the specifics of the material you are grinding, such as stainless steel, galvanized products and other exotic metals. Make certain you know the protection you require. Be careful about outer clothing. Anything that could snag or catch fire is dangerous. Wear long sleeves and tuck in shirt tails. Do not wear loose fitting clothes. It's best to wear natural fibers like cotton as synthetics like polyester are extremely flammable. Always remember that PPE, personal protective equipment, is the last line of defense and does not replace the use of safe work practices for grinder operation. Your company may require monthly documented inspections of any grinder used as a cutting tool. This will require a designated competent person to complete the inspections. But more importantly, before each use, the grinder, its various components and the cutoff disc must all be inspected by the operator. Check the cord for fraying, cuts or any type of damage and that the plug end is intact and that the plug is undamaged the switch to ensure it operates properly and that the trigger lock has been removed. And check that the appropriate cutting guard has been installed and is secure. Specific guards for cutoff discs are provided by various manufacturers. Follow the installation instructions for these guards. 
do not tamper with or alter the manufacturer's design guards. They are there to protect you. Inspect the cutoff or zip disc for chips, cracks, and general condition. A damaged disc will not perform well and is dangerous. Cutoff discs can fragment and fly apart, causing serious injury or even death. If the cutoff disc is damaged, replace it. When changing cutoff or zip discs, make sure the grinder is unplugged. Ensure that you have control of the cord end. This applies to both electric and pneumatic grinders. You do not want someone energizing the tool by mistake when you were changing a disc. When tightening the disc, it is important not to over tighten. Tighten with only enough pressure to prevent slippage. All grinders and cutoff discs have an RPM rating. The cutoff disc must always have an RPM rating at least as high as the rating for the grinder. The disc may have a higher rating, but never lower. Discs rotating at higher speeds than their rating may fly apart or shatter altogether. Double check that both ratings match. General purpose cutoff discs are not to be used for cutting on non-ferrous metals such as aluminum. There are various cutoff discs for different materials. Your grinder RPM rating should be legible on the tool, but if in doubt, check with your supervisor or at the tool crib. Always ask. When mounting a cutoff disc onto a grinder, follow the cutoff disc and machine manufacturer's instructions. Use matched flanges, equal in diameter, designed for cutoff discs. Do not use flanges or back plates that are not specifically designed for the flat cutoff disc. Improper flanges may push out the center of the cutoff disc, causing it to break. Again, if a grinder is to be used for cutting, the switch must be pressure controlled. All switch and trigger locks, called dead man switches, must be removed. If you lose your grip, you want the machine to stop. An out of control spinning grinder is an invitation to disaster. Never tape or lock the trigger in any way. As the handling of a grinder demands physical effort, a worker should stretch and loosen up before commencing the job. Micro breaks should be taken throughout the job task to promote circulation, prevent cramping, and to keep your body in balance. Always assess the job task to determine correct posture and positioning for your body. Make certain your work area is clean, tidy, and free of combustible materials. A fire extinguisher should be present and you should be educated on how to use it. As they can be a source of ignition, sparks should be contained with spark deflection screens or fire blankets. Make a final check of the area before you begin cutting with a grinder. Alert co-workers that you are about to commence cutting. Make certain they are out of your spark stream or line of fire. All co-workers in your vicinity must be wearing safety glasses and those in close proximity should wear face shields as well. It's important to keep in mind that the operator is the best protected. It's your co-workers you have to really look out for. When starting, make sure the cutoff disc is not contacting the material before the switch is turned on. Hold the grinder firmly with both hands, with your feet well positioned for balance. Using the handle gives you better control and helps prevent dangerous kickback. The cutting edge of the disc must be used with only enough force to work the material. Any lateral or twisting pressure on the cutoff disc could easily cause it to shatter. For this same reason, never grind on the side of a cutoff disc. Always be aware of the power cord as it can become an electrocution hazard if the grinder cuts into it. When stopping, make certain all motion has ceased before setting the grinder face down. When the job is complete or you have to leave the area, unplug the grinder. Use canvas nose bags to raise and lower grinders from elevations. Do not use the electrical cord for lifting a grinder. Always replace the cutoff disc if the tool is dropped. The first time you use any particular cutoff disc, check out the specifications or ask for advice from a competent person. When working with temporary power or in damp locations, use ground fault circuit interrupters to help reduce the potential for electrocution. Cutoff saws that use cutoff blades are particularly dangerous and due to the size of the blades involved, they are extremely vulnerable to damage. Always check the blade specifications for installation and use. 
Thoroughly check blades and be certain that the cutoff blade is correctly matched for the type of material to be cut, and also that the RPM rating of the machine matches the cutoff blade. The blade can be rated higher, but never lower than the RPM rating on the machine. If your cutoff blade is rated too low, you are inviting injury and death. Do not ever run a blade rated below the cutting tool RPM rating. Your company may require monthly documented inspections of cutoff saws and blades. This will require a designated competent person to complete the inspections. Unplug the cord and check it for fraying, cuts or any type of damage and that the plug end is intact and that the plug is undamaged. But more importantly, before each use, the cutoff saw, its various components, and the cutoff blade must all be inspected by the operator. Make certain spring returns and automatic guards are working properly. Ensure that all guards and shields are in place and secure before operating. If the cutting blade has to be changed, unplug the saw and ensure you have control of the plug end. When mounting a cutoff blade onto a cutoff saw, Follow the blade and machine manufacturer's instructions. Use the correct flanges when installing the new blade. Never substitute flanges that are not recommended by the manufacturer. Faulty installation can cause the blade to shatter and lead to lethal consequences. Also, never over-tighten the blade. You want it just tight enough to prevent slippage. Over-tightening a cut-off blade can create minute hairline fractures that are invisible to the naked eye that may cause the blade at high RPMs to dangerously shatter. So now you're ready to cut. Mark your cut line onto the material. Secure the material in the bench of the cutoff saw so it will not move. Make a final check to ensure everyone is safely out of the spark stream or line of fire. A fire extinguisher should be present and you should be educated on how to use it. Deflection screens and fire blankets may be required for spark containment. Check your personal protective equipment. Avoid standing directly in the line of fire with the cutting wheel. Turn on the machine and let the cutting blade come up to full speed. This gives you the opportunity to double check the rotation of the blade. Is there any wobble? Is the blade out of alignment? If you notice any of these problems, turn off and unplug the saw. Red tag the saw and check with your supervisor. If everything appears to be running well, commence cutting. Allow the wheel to do the cutting. Excessive force will cause the wheel to glaze, reducing cutting efficiency and or bending and deflecting the disc, causing inaccurate cuts. Do not use too much pressure or you may cause the blade to fragment and dangerously fly apart. Do not use the side of the cutoff blade to grind. Side grinding will create grooves, reducing the wheel's thickness and compromise any fiberglass reinforcing the cutoff blade may have, and this may cause it to shatter. Any lateral pressure on the blade may lead to deadly consequences. Long work pieces must be supported by a block so it will be level with the top of the base. It's a good practice to use a table that has an opening directly below the cutoff saw. In this way, sparks and hot fragments drop below the table and will not bounce right back into your face. This helps to reduce the possibility of eye and face injuries. Finally, do not use a cutoff saw blade in a portable grinder. Keep a garbage container close by to make housekeeping easier. Flawed or cracked discs must be discarded. Treat your grinder with care and store it in a cool, dry area where it won't be physically damaged. Cutting blades should always be removed before storing the grinder, as damage can easily occur with such fragile blades. They must be carefully protected when stored. Blades should be stored in a dry location free of any contaminants such as oil, grease or water, including condensation. Contaminants may break down the bonding agents within the disc and lead to dangerous disintegration. Faulty or defective grinders and cutoff saws must be tagged and removed from service for repair. It's important to fill out the repair tag stating exactly what is not working correctly with the tool. This saves important maintenance time and effort in getting the tool safely back into service. 
After cutting, clean and sweep your area so as to prevent small particle residue from becoming eye irritants. If you leave the work area clean and safe for the next worker, it will always be appreciated.